my story is called Cages. Animals do strange things when they're locked in a cage. They pace and worry. They chew on the bars. They even chew on themselves. But after a long enough period of time, they grow to love their cage. They spend so much time within it that it becomes all that they remember, the whole of their reality. My reality of being a female in a male-dominated world came with an eerily similar cage of its own. From childhood, I was taught to never walk alone or stay out late, burdened by fear that I could be overpowered or hurt by a stranger. Instead of looking at this world as a playground for me to develop relationships and grow, I limited myself to curfews and lit paths. Last year, I was attacked in a public restroom. My assailant was not the shadow man my imagination had been long taught to expect. The person that aggressed me was far more real and familiar. I had worked with her for years. When we see fights on TV, they happen very fast. Bam, bam, swing, miss, punch, swoop. Clean hits, chiseled chins, a little blood, crisp sound effects, and the good guy always wins. When it happens in real life, your watch stops, and the only thing keeping time is your heart pounding through your chest. Every burst thuds against your eardrum. There, as you're slumped against the cold tile, gasping for air, what will be your next move? Take off your shoes. Every second blood is rushing to your heart, air into your lungs. Try not to pee your pants. Snot starts running down your face because you were just punched in the nose. Scream for help, and nobody's coming. You're reaching for the straps of your stilettos. Don't break your ankles. You are Bambi on ice. Keep moving. You're trying to keep distance, but every hit slows you more than the last. You're wiping blood, snot, and spit on the floor as you're crawling across it. Maybe I would have done better if I were more prepared. Maybe I should have stayed home, locked away. My coworker was an abrupt person. In hindsight, I should have seen it coming. She was always picking a fight with passerbys, citing points of her life when people hurt her or did her wrong, despite having a loving son and husband at home. She was having affairs with several men, all of which she bragged about during our breaks at work. I should have seen the transition from coworker to friend to enemy. I didn't understand it, and I probably never will. While I was taking a phone call at my desk, she tried to say something to me. I hushed her and asked her for her to please just wait until I got off the phone. It must have been important. She ran around the office screaming and cussing about how I was a traitor. I started getting life-threatening texts all hours of the day and night. I would notice her car behind mine on my drive home from work. Would today be the day? I moved into my boyfriend's apartment, but would she show up to the office with a gun? The battle was no longer just between us. It was in my mind, running wild. After being stalked for months and ultimately attacked in a public restroom, a police officer told me to file a restraining order. Suffice to say, I needed more than a piece of paper to tell me I would be safe. A woman called after receiving my inquiry about a local mixed martial arts gym and asked me to check out a kickboxing class. My first reaction was, what, next time I'm attacked, I'm just going to tie bow the person to death? <laughs> Despite my reservations, I went the same night. The first thing you learn in MMA is that you should always protect yourself. I learned how to block and move. Block and move. 
After a few nights, I made several friends, one of them being Barb the Barbarian. She had her own motives for fighting. Her experiences were more traumatic than mine, and she was crazy. She was the perfect new best friend. <laughs> we practiced moving our heads, keeping our chins down, our hands up, and shuffling in circular directions. I honestly think I kept going just because of all the friends I was making. My new friendships lightly masked how difficult our exercises were. And it was hard. It was so hard. A common saying in the gym is, it never gets easier, you just get better. You have to push through pain and injury, come out of your shell, and live to withstand another day. We all train together, side by side. If one of us wanted to stop, the entire team would wait and encourage the straggler to keep going. Push-ups, pull-ups, burpees, mountain climbers, friendship squats, walk-downs, American psychos, pissers, and a myriad of other inappropriately named workouts. <laughs> if one of us pushed ourselves so hard that we puked in a trash can, it was celebrated. <laughs> All little victories were huge accomplishments. Failures weren't failures at all, just lessons learned. No matter what, keep going, keep pushing, and never stop fighting. I used to think that getting hit would be the most difficult part about fighting. Getting punched in the face is actually really easy. <laughs> Just stand there and let it happen. It took me months of training at a gym before I was able to spar, months more to learn how to hit someone back. When you're taught your entire life not to hit someone in the face, your body and brain impair your ability to do so. When I hit someone in the face for the first time, it wasn't so much of a hit as it was a tap on the nose. Boop. <laughs> but eventually, after enough beatings, that tap on the nose turned into a poke. The poke became a slap and then the slap transformed into a blow. And then eventually, like the crack of a whip percussing through the air, my fists were lightning strikes. But then there I was, saying sorry. In the world of MMA, it is crucial that you learn how to stop saying sorry. Don't be sorry for being yourself. Don't be sorry for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Don't be sorry for going to the restroom alone. Don't be sorry. After eight grueling months of becoming a fighter, my coach announced I would have my first formal match with a girl 20 pounds heavier than me. She had been training in Taekwondo her entire life. <laughs> this was the bitch that could Taibo me to death. Comparatively, I had no chance of winning. But it didn't matter, because the fight wasn't with her. The fight was with myself, in my mind. And what of my stalker? My assailant? She wandered off into the frail abyss of what I was before I learned to face myself. Before I learned that my body will do exactly as my mind commands before I learned to throw lightning blows. Women can do strange things when they're locked in a cage. They can pace, worry, chew on the bars, or even themselves. The night before my fight, I thought I ate something bad. <laughs> I kept pacing and going to the bathroom. I must have pooped 10 times. <laughs> Don't worry, it was perfectly normal. Barb the Barbarian told me so. I tried my best to put my head in a dark place. It was a tumultuous process. I ate raw meat. I listened to heavy metal music and watched The Karate Kid. <laughs> I turned off my phone and went to bed alone. I tried my best to dream of murder. 
I needed my mind to forget humanity and not remember it until I had a medal hanging from my neck. I thought of my stalker and how hopeless she would be if we ran across each other down a dark alley. The smug look on her face, I thought about crushing it into concrete. I took all of that anger and compressed it into a black hole of I'm going to fuck you up. When we see fights on TV in an octagon of street fence, they happen very fast. Bam, bam, swing, swoop, miss, kick, choke, scuffle, break, clean hits, missed blocks, coaches yelling, and crowds cheering. Two minutes of fame. Clean, the evening of my first fight was soaked in adrenaline. From the moment I stepped into the ring, it was like I had been shot into outer space. My mind ignored every bursting nerve ending, each fractured kneecap. She kicked me in the head and I felt nothing. The erratic beat of my heart kept the time. No reaching to unbuckle high heels or sliding around on filthy tile. She moved across the ring and I chased her down. No blood curdling screams for help. I found power in silence and taking measured breaths. No obsessive glancing in rear view mirrors. My hands were up and my chin was down. In that moment, I fearlessly faced a world composed entirely of genderless brutality. Blood rushing, air flowing, no pain. I was invincible. Everyone in the, in the world just disappeared. I didn't even realize there was a referee until he pulled me off of her. And when my arm was raised over my head, declaring that I was the victor and someone bigger and better than me truly was not bigger and better than me, I heard the unlatching of a deadbolt. I felt this weight lift off of me. That evening, I entered without fear an entirely new cage, the one that set me free. Brandy Carver. <laughs>